Welcome back. This is Teresa Adams with the Community College of Denver, and today what we're going to do is prove the sum and difference for cosines. So as we take a look here, and we have our angle alpha right here, this is our angle alpha. If we wanted to add our angle beta to it or subtract our angle beta to it, then we can take a look at our distances. So if I look at the distance from here to here, distance from here here, should be the same. So I'm going to use the distance formula. And if I'm on a unit circle, then my um, point at B, my point at C, would be the cosine of alpha plus beta, the sine of alpha plus beta, or the distance beyond the circle. And then my point C of the circle would be the cosine of beta minus the sine of beta. So I move the distance formula and I'm Now, if we take that and square both sides, well, we can see the square root goes away. Well, that's pretty obvious. Then, when we square the binomials, so go ahead and multiply the cosine of alpha plus beta minus 1 squared, and multiply it out, that's going to be a perfect square trinomial, and so it's going to be the cosine squared alpha plus beta minus 2 cosine alpha plus beta plus 1. And because of the fact that this is 0, when I square it, I'm just going to get the sine squared alpha plus beta. So, if I keep going, and I go ahead and square out the second side, the right-hand side, I'm going to get a perfect square trinomial again, and it's going to be cosine squared alpha minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine squared beta. And the same thing with a sine alpha plus sine beta squared is a perfect square trinomial, so it's going to be plus sine squared alpha plus 2 sine alpha sine beta, and then plus sine beta. However, wherever I see the sine squared alpha and our cosine squared alpha and our sine beta and a cosine squared beta, those always equal 1. So we know, since those always equal 1, that the cosine squared alpha and the sine squared alpha becomes 1 the cosine squared beta and the sine squared beta comes 1, so I have 2. That's where this 2 comes from. Now, if I do the same thing with my cosine squared alpha plus beta and my sine squared alpha plus beta, this will become 1 as well. And since I already had 1 right there, those two combined becomes 2. So, if I subtract 2 from both sides, then I'm going to get the cosine, uh, and divide, don't forget to divide by negative 2. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, that what will happen is that this 2 will cancel with this 2. And then if I divide everything by negative 2, this negative 2 goes away, this negative 2 goes away, this becomes a minus 1 there. And I end up with the cosine of alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And similarly, if I did the cosine of alpha minus beta, I'm going to get the cosine alpha cosine beta plus the sine alpha sine beta. Thank you for watching.